Hello classmates and Dr. Brogan. I hope you have all had a wonderful semester. I have missed not being in class with you all. Because of the limited direct social contact brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, swim coaching has been changed dramatically because face-to-face -face coaching could be deemed as a health risk. This was the motivational factor for me to explore this topic. Swim coaches need guidance for alternative coaching strategies in emergency situations. Back in March, COVID-19 lockdowns and restrictions swept the country. My swim team and teams throughout the country were not allowed to continue swim practices. As a result of these lockdown measures, Central California swim coaches met over Zoom several times a month for a few months to discuss what we were going to do going forward without having access to a, a pool for an extended amount of time. We discussed ideas on how to keep our athletes active, um, connected to their teammates, and the program to continue offering services so coaches could maintain their incomes and livelihoods. No one on any of these calls reported having experience coaching in the online setting. In the picture is my former collegiate coach. Coach Johnson has been coaching in the Springfield, Ohio area for about 40 years. In a phone call that I had with Dave Johnson back in April, Johnson reported not being technologically advanced, that it was his first time coaching solely online, and that most of his coaching friends were learning as they went along like himself. In the photo, it was taken in October in one of his first practices back with the infamous 2020 face mask. My research problem stems from what the COVID-19 pandemic revealed about the swimming world, which was a lack of experience that swim coaches have coaching on the online setting. From the evidence that I reported in the previous slides, it can be inferred that coaches need techniques and strategies to effectively respond to future emergency situations by using remote platforms like Zoom, Skype, Google Teams to continue developing athletes' skills. At the very end of this presentation, after my literature review, uh, the scope of my research is going to consist of 50 USA swimming coaches which will be surveyed regarding what they want and what they need to understand effective online pedagogies. In order to provide coaches with the knowledge to flexibly adapt to coaching in the online setting, coaches need to be aware of successful teaching methodologies and methodologies of those that fail. Next, coaches will need to understand effective online pedagogies that build relationships between coaches and athletes. Finally, third point, coaches can enhance their coaching by better understanding the pedagogy for mental skills development. Google defines methodology as a system of methods used in a particular area of study of activity. In my review, I wanted to develop a contextual framework of what works and what doesn't work in this mode of instruction and how to deliver this mode. After examining reviews performed by Arkeful and Abadu and a separate review conducted by Thomerson, the following positives were uncovered. This setting provides flexibility on time away from traveling, space taking out the classroom, and instructors are able to take advantage of unlimited amounts of information that can be accessed in seconds. And finally, it can be cost-effective without the room and travel costs. Both reviews found that online instruction, however, was less enjoyable, effective, and worse in social skills when compared to traditional education.
Arkaful and Abadou's review examined different methods of delivery uh, that coaches can employ when teaching online. The two on this slide are synchronous, where the instructor and student are together simultaneously in the online setting, and asynchronous, where students log in when it's most convenient to them and learn from pre-recorded lessons. A part of the Thomerson review was a survey study. Uh, in it, it indicated that using technologies, new technologies, was the aspect that students were most excited about in distance learning. To contrast, Archiful and Abadou cited technology as being the major source of dissatisfaction, a part of distance learning technological issues. In this section, I will examine three studies that determine the effectiveness of pedagogies that build relationships between instructors and coaches. Pedagogy can be defined as a method and practice of teaching. The science of profession of teaching effectively. As coaches move their instruction from the pool deck to virtual classroom, they must understand and use these effective pedagogies. The first is transfer of training. The Wang and Wentling study explored the relationship between distance coaching and the transfer of training. The next pedagogy is overcoming group work resistance. Smith and colleagues explored this resistance and compared it on the online setting versus the traditional face-to-face -face setting. And the last pedagogy was explored was teaching immediacy and teaching presence, both found to be critical in the online setting. Building relationships with athletes enhances transfer of training. Wang and Wessling explored this by compiling data from international participants from 18 separate countries. This study found the following. Relationships with athletes was critical to transfer of training. Encouragement improved the ability of athletes to learn new skills. Immediate forms of communication was preferred by athletes. And this includes phone calls, emails, web board postings, and emails. Wang and Wessling also determined that synchronous instruction is most effective in the online setting. Teaching presence and immediacy are directly connected to student outcomes and their overall experience. Chakraborty and Nakafuku study found the following. In the online setting, key aspects for instructor is presence, immediacy feedback, knowledge, varied learning styles, and communication. This study revealed common findings to Wang and Wessling, which include teaching and coaching are about problem solving, providing resources to athletes, building relationships, defining clear expectations, and monitoring progress. There were further similar findings between the studies mentioned in the previous slides. Students expect prepared instructors, interaction with participants, relationships, encouragement from instructors, Wang and Wessling in the Chakraborty and Nakafu agreed on the previously mentioned items. Disagreements were also found. Most notably in distance education, positive learning communities enhance feedback and discussion. Learning communities being two classrooms that come together uh, with common educational goals and outcomes. To contrast, Smith and colleagues found that distance education creates uh, further issues in group work. Uh, 
and that it's harder to solve these group work issues in the online setting than the face-to-face -face setting. Moving on to the last section uh, of the literature review, which is all about how coaches can effectively teach mental skills. I've separated this section into tools that coaches can take advantage of that take advantage of technologies and those that don't require any tech, uh, technology at all to take advantage of. This will make uh, teaching these um, uh, through these methods fun, varied, um, and even more effective. Virtual memory palaces are images with a series of pictures or numbers that can be used to improve recall, speed, and accuracy for information. Krukos and colleagues proved these are effective and can be used in both the desktop and laptop setting and also using head mounted displays. This can be used to design memory palaces to teach swimming uh, turns, strokes, and dives uh, virtually free. The next technology, VR headsets. Sands and colleagues explored whether highly immersive systems can be implemented in training programs. Participants used virtual reality devices and ex to experience challenging situations which might produce behavioral and physiological responses. Results of this study show changes in both and suggestive to improve performance. The last 3D stroke dynamics. A virtual coaching environment works to improve athletic performance. To help improve golf performance, Kelly and colleagues developed a set of visualization and analysis tools for use in virtual golf coaching environment. In this virtual coaching study, analysis tools allowed golfers to see specific areas where they could improve their technique by use of 3D stroke dynamics that can be isolated at any portion of their swing. The authors concluded in this study that successful use of the proposed system for the extraction of performance determining factors prove its effectiveness as a coaching tool. The last two uh, pedagogies for mental skill development that I took a look at, explored, were first visualization, which was shown to produce a cognitive load or electrical activity in the brain, similar to when individuals actually perform that movement. This proves that visualization or imagery can be used to improve technique, developing strategies, controlling anxiety, and much more. Anderson and colleagues in 2011 uh, conducted this study using EEG technology. Visualization is a mental rehearsal activity that can be uh, performed without technology. This can be external or a view from an outside perspective or internal from your own eyes view. The more senses you can experience, the better. Self-talk's the other mental skill tool. Theodorus and colleagues conducted a study on basketball shooters which proved negative self-talk worsened basketball shooting outcomes while positive self-talk improved performance. During months without competitions, it should be pointed out, swimmers can lose their mental edge competitively and struggle mentally without seeing their teammates. Social isolation has negative impacts on the mind. This has been well studied. For instance, Dr. Rady's book entitled Spark explores many of these studies how isolation and lack of exercises decrease focus, ability to learn new information, and leads to depression. This is why I feel coaches should learn effective pedagogies uh, for mental skill development. 
Finally, my research proposal um, is going to cover the following things over the next few slides. First, what research questions I want to answer, and then the methodological approach that I will be taking. These are the following four questions that I hope to answer uh, by my series of questions in the survey. First, I want to determine how proficient coaches are in using online platforms. Second, how comfortable are coaches in the online platform setting? Third, how coaches evaluate the effectiveness of online platforms? And lastly, what do coaches need to know to make better use of online platforms? The design of my research study, the approach I'll be taking is one of categorization and evaluation of results of the survey. Second, I will be recruiting participants randomly from 10 separate local swim committees or conferences within USA Swimming, five coaches per LSE. This will give me a total of 50 USA Swimming coaches. I will be taking a year to conduct this research, uh, write down the results, and report the findings. I will be using an online platform called Data Survey Monkey to collect and record the data. It will be uh, collected anonymously. Thank you for your time listening to my literature review and research proposal. The remainder of the video will consist of my references. I look forward to hearing your feedback.